Hi there, welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name is Jane and in today's video it's all about my experimenting with my Swedish tracing paper. So welcome back and um, before I continue I am wearing my Somerset t-shirt by Maven Patterns in this gorgeous fabric unfortunately hasn't washed or isn't lasting very well at all if you recall my previous vlogs on this fabric that I got lots of it three meters for about six pound beautiful fabric well really pretty fabric but it the quality is really poor and it's gone really bitty and not very nice but because I'm just mooching about the house today, messing about in my sewing room, it's absolutely fine and I, I do love it. So that's what I'm wearing and I've just got a roll neck top underneath because it's really cold outside today and I do feel the cold on my neck. So on to today's vlog. So I have been experimenting with some Swedish tracing paper. The one, the paper that I've been using is the paper that you can get from Pattern Trace. I shall show you the roll that I've got if you're not familiar with it. It comes on a roll and it's by Pattern Trace and I'll put the link for this company in the description box below and this roll is one meter by 10 meters and you, so you get quite a lot on the roll but the reason why I've been using this is because it is really strong a really good quality sturdy uh, tracing paper and I've used it for quite some time now and you can all if you wanted to get some of this uh, I do have a 10% discount code as well that you can use it never expires this code loopy mabel 10 I've used this code on quite a few of my vlogs and it will never expire so if you fancy getting any of their products from pattern trace please feel free to use the code loopy mabel 10 and you'll get your 10% discount off any of the products so back to the, the Swedish tracing paper because I know, know it's really good and strong and sturdy I thought I thought would it make a toile now well, I definitely wouldn't use it if I was going to do a full pattern draft you know experiment something that I've designed from scratch that I know that you know I'm not sure how it's going to fit me or anything then I would probably use muslin fabric or some some sort of fabric like that but because I was experimenting with a pattern that I know already fits me, which is the ruffle sleeve top by In The Falls, and you can get it from the Peppermint magazine. You can get this, it's a free pattern to download, and I'll put the link for that as well in the, in the description box. Now, this is the blouse that, this is the pattern, blouse pattern that I mentioned in my uh, previous vlog on my plain solid fabrics and all the sewing plans I had for them. And this is one of them and I'm going to be making this in white because I don't have a white blouse to my name. Uh, but I want, I've made it before and I'll pop um, the details of me, me, what I've made before. I used my Nana's old curtains, God bless her. And I did, I did, I followed this pattern to the letter when I did that and uh, did the V-neck and everything fits really nice. So, but I wanted to have a go at changing some part of it namely the neck area so obviously it's a v-neck and I wanted to have a go at making it more of a round neck so I knew the pattern obviously got the pattern cut out and I knew the pattern fits me fine so because I knew the pattern fits me I thought well I wonder if I could make uh, the pattern hack using the Swedish paper because it's really it's really sturdy really strong really good quality um, and rather than using fabric as a toile use this now it's worked absolutely fine it's stitched up on the machine absolutely fine i mean it's really creased because obviously it's been in and out the machine and on and off the machine and um what have you but the reason why i thought i'd use this is because obviously I'm, i wanted to amend the neck area and i thought well the rest of the pattern i know does fit me so you know could i possibly just get away with using this so i'll show you the original pattern this is the front the front and the back they're both cut on the fold and this is the front piece and obviously it's quite a deep v neck area so i wanted to raise it up slightly and make it more of a round neck so i traced this all out and then i drew the round neck that i liked that i thought i would like 
so I raised it quite a bit and obviously then I had to make my facings, trace the facings and that fine so I did all that there's my face I'll show you my facings so I did the facings there's the back facing and then I've got the front facing stitch the facings together absolutely fine and then I stitched the two the front and the back pieces together this is the new the, the, well this is the second version actually the first version I stitched the front and the back together put the facings on but when I come to try it on I couldn't get it all on my head because I obviously raised the neckline up which is obviously going to reduce the, 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 the area to get your head through and I didn't take that into consideration so what I did was I unpicked the facing and it unpicked just like you would unpick fabric and didn't rip just unpicked fine and then went back to the drawing board and I thought well obviously I've raised the neck area at the front I've reduced the size of the area to get your head in so how am I going to get around this so there was two options one option was to make the back piece which is cut on the fold um, make it into two and then add a seam allowance a seam then create an opening and then work out whether was I going to put a zip in or was I going to do a button loop and what have you or to make a little bit more area on the back neck because when I did the my my amendment on the first time around I only um, tackled the front didn't even consider thinking about the back part I just thought well the back is the back you won't need to touch the back but clearly I needed to take a little bit out the back scoop a little bit out the back to keep the opening big enough for me to get my head through so after I'd realized that I then dropped the, the my version down a fraction so it was a little bit higher so I dropped it down by a centimeter and then at the back I scooped out about a centimeter from the back so there's nothing too major but enough to get my head through when the original one when I did first of all it was like if I had pulled really tight it would have my head would have got through but then you know it would have damaged the top over time and you would get makeup all over if you're going to put it on if you've got makeup on and what have you and it would just be a nightmare and it wasn't that wasn't really it wasn't really an option so second time um, obviously I had to redo the facings because the facings were slightly out so then redid the facings then stitched them to the obviously the front and the back stitched up the side seams I didn't need to stitch the side seams up but obviously I just needed to get my head through but I thought no, I'll do it properly I st stitched up the side seams I've put the darts in and I've even stitched a, s a sleeve in as well I just really wanted to see how far I could go with this twirl how it would work and it's absolutely fine obviously it's really creased because it's been in and out of the machine and what have you and the facing's gone in lovely and um, so I can get my head through so cracked it so it's by doing it that way because I, I thought well I didn't really want to go down the line of putting a seam allowance in the in the back and then putting in an opening because then that wasn't going to solve the problem that I had is getting my head through and I wanted to learn well why what have I done wrong that my head won't go through and obviously I think I've got it right I've, I've now realized that if you're going to adjust the front you also need to consider the back especially if you're going to be bringing in the side you know the area reducing the area down so I've, at least I've learned that so I was really pleased so it's just, really what I wanted to do was share with you what I thought of this how it's worked um, and has it has it stood up to what I wanted to do with it and it has it hasn't torn it hasn't ripped or anything and it's stitched absolutely fine and unpicked absolutely fine so for small adjustments and small amendments to patterns that you know that are already going to fit you and you know you don't really want to do a full twirl using up fabric and because you know fabric is fabric at the end of the day and um, I'd rather be cutting into it to make a proper outfit or proper garment than experimenting with it and not knowing whether it was going to work because if I'd have done that if I'd have done this with with one of my fabrics obviously I could have used muslin but I haven't got any so so if I'd have done it with one of my fabrics I it would have been wrong so it would have to be unpicked and the more you handle it and what have you so so I'm really pleased so for 
I think for simple hacks, slight adjustments to patterns, I just think this is an ideal way of getting around not using fabric. And now I know that my original pattern that I've traced absolutely now spot on and get my head through I can then reuse this it's not going to get wasted because I can reuse this and cut it up and use it for other pattern tracings but I know now my pattern that I've traced with my adjustments is spot on and my head will fit through and it fits me absolutely fine so I'm really pleased so I feel as if I've learned something and um, saved some of my precious fabric stash as well so and I just wanted to share it with you so if you've never thought of doing it there's a little bit of an idea for you and if you have done it before please share what you've done how far you would go with your Swedish paper would you go for the full-on toile or would you just do like I've done just to see if you can get your your pattern amendments on so I've learned something self-taught and I probably hopefully won't make the same mistake again and um, it's I'm really enjoying it to be fair I'm really enjoying this um, creativity or whatever you call it um, and it's definitely boosted my confidence and now I'm ready to make the full-on blouse my round neck version of my ruffle sleeve blouse in the white fabric so I'm ready to go and cut it out and I know for a fact I won't have any problems and it's going to fit me absolutely fine so win-win so that's it for today just a quick vlog um, hope you liked today's video if you did a thumbs up please and obviously if you haven't subscribed and you like to follow along what I'm making please don't forget to subscribe and uh, please feel free to leave any comments in the box below I love reading your comments and if you've got any tips or you know um, advice on anything to do with pattern hacking and what have you greatly welcomed thank you very much and it's nice to share with other people as well so thank you so much for joining me today. I'm off now to do some proper cutting out on some proper fabric and I shall see you next time. Take care for now. Thank you. Bye.